Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. Now by the title of today's video, you can tell that we are doing a career re-simulation and the guy that we're focusing on for this episode is the man who's on the screen himself, Troy Tulowitzki, a absolute fantastic shortstop. I'm definitely one of the better players of the 2000s. He was an elite hitter and an elite shortstop. Now to do this career simulation, we are in the game Out of the Park Baseball 21 or uh, maybe better known by the name OOTP. Now this is a, a text-based baseball simulation game if you have not heard of it before. And the reason this game is really good for something like this is because you can basically start a save uh, in this game for pretty much every any year that um, the MLB has existed. And the simulation engine is actually pretty good. It's much better than like MLB The Show and has uh, a lot better player progression ratings and player development sort of things. And another um, really cool tool that we're going to be utilizing throughout this kind of series is it actually has a special tab where it has real life stats. So... Um, Troy Tulisky is going to be progressed. Um, his ratings are going to progress by the game development engine, so we're not going to be touching anything. And uh, his progression will just be solely based on his performance. And um, of course, if he performs well, you know his development could even go up. If he does not perform well, then his ratings, um, you know, won't progress as highly as they should. But again, this real life stats thing is something that we're going to be using. Let's go to major league right now so yeah you can see pretty much every season that he's ever put in the major leagues and see you know what kind of seasons he has and you know the reason why we're doing this career re-simulation in the first place is because Troy Tulowitzki is a player that's career really succumbed to injuries he was an elite player in the league you see there I mean a bunch of four war seasons an all-star a fantastic player but then his career kind of went downhill here and see in 2012 he started with a lot of injuries then only played 47 games and really didn't play any full seasons after that and really I mean he only had two seasons where he played over 150 games which is really a full season a game I mean a season where he had 140 games played but really other than that not many games played but even when he was healthy I mean look at this 2014 season 91 games played hit 343 uh, 432 slugged over 600 um, WRC plus of 158 I mean an absolute crazy season he had a war of over four in 90 games which of course is a little over half a season so he I mean his career is fantastic he's an amazing player but his career was short by injuries but in this save there are no injuries so Troy Tulowitzki is going to be free from the injury bug and now that we've talked about kind of introducing um, you know, the game we're using to simulate this, we're introducing kind of some of the features we're going to be utilizing. It's time to look at the man himself, Troy Tulowitzki. Now, for these ratings, as you can see, uh, you might notice that they're um, not particularly high. This is because that we are going to be using real MLB scouting ratings. Now, the real MLB scouting scale is based on a 20 to 80 scale. So 80 is the max rating that any player could have in any skill available. And we are here in 2006, which is the actual year that Troy Tulitsky made his Major League debut. So he's already been drafted by the Rockies, where he was drafted in 2005. And we were in 2006, um, where the season where he made his Major League debut. He is not going to be starting on the opening day roster. But since I'm not um, the general manager, manager, really anything to do with the Rockies in this game, it'll be totally up to the computer to, you know, decide where to play him, when to play him, when to call him up. So we'll pretty much just be at the mercy for the game for those things. Now, digging into his ratings here, he's pretty raw still. Um, many of his hitting ratings are in the 40s. But of course, as you can see, his potential ratings are pretty good. 65 contacts, 60 home run power. 55 eye discipline which is the ability to walk and get on base and I mean right now he's pretty much an average major league player 46 overall rating his potential is all the way up at 75 now if you remember a few seconds ago when I said that the max rating you could have is 80 so he is pretty much looking at the max potential rating that you could be he's almost um, you know as good of a player as you can be graded 
in the MLB. Now his defensive ratings are already way, way up there. As I mentioned earlier, one of the best two-way shortstops in the game, uh, really to ever play the game. Absolute great defender, especially when he was a young player. I mean, I remember on one season he had a DRS, which is defensive run saved, about 31, which is absolute crazy. Um, just a crazy, crazy just statistic is I can see his infield air rating, which, you know, is his ability to really uh, not make errors in the field, is an 80, which is already maxed out. So already he's just an elite defensive player. Now, real quick, um, before we get into the season, we're going to go ahead and look at the prospect pipeline, you know, showing who the top prospects are in the league. And as you can see right here, number one is Troy Tulowitzki for the Rockies and of course there are some guys here who you um, may recognize you know some guy here named Clayton Kershaw, Tim Lincecum, Ben Zobris, Joey Votto, Carlos Carrasco, Dustin Pedroia, Pablo Sandoval, Carlos Santana and you know the list goes on and on. I'm sure you've heard of some of these players in the past. Now speaking of these players um, in this game players will be introduced to the league through the MLB draft each year however you know there will be um they'll be drafted most likely most likely to different teams um than drafted them in real life so that is definitely going to be something that we're also going to be paying attention to as we go on but without a further ado let's um get into it and I'll update you as we go along through the season okay so now we've actually reached the end of the first season of Troy Tulowitzki's major league career and he actually got a bit more playing time than he did in real life. Now, in this game, he got uh, about 140 games in, which is a lot more than he got in in real life. And unfortunately, he was not very good in his first Major League season. Um, the Rockies may have called, called him up a little before uh, he was ready, but he still turned in a, a 1.2 war season. I really didn't hit for any power. Oh, just kind of the theme of this season. He got on base a decent clip, but now let's compare that to his real life stats, and we'll sort by major league. And yeah, I mean, in real life, he only got tw about 20 games in during the season. I'm um, still, I mean, actually, he did hit better um, over those about 140 games um, than he did in his 25 games in that rookie season. But however, um, his ratings actually did go down. Uh, his potential went down to a 65 now. Don't worry. That can still go up, I do believe. But uh, the Rockies definitely used him um, a bit more than they probably should have. They definitely should not have uh, caught him up. Hopefully this doesn't ruin his development too much further in the future. But the Rockies, however, as a team, did pretty well. They are um, they finished 93 and 68 and actually um, made the playoffs, won their division. So we're just gonna I'm just gonna show you real quick. The top performers on their team, I mean, guys you'd pretty much expect. Brad Hobb, Matt Holliday, Todd Helton, um, young Chris Iannetta. So definitely some guys who uh, have had, went on to have pretty good careers. And then we'll sort by fit for pitching. Uh, Jeff Francis, uh, Jason Jennings, Aaron Cook, those kind of guys in their starting rotation. And then we'll actually go ahead and I'll show you guys the playoffs. So the Rockies are going to be facing the St. Louis Cardinals. Now remember, there's only wild, one wild card team here um, at this point in the MLB. So we're going to go ahead and sim the round, see if the Rockies can beat the Cardinals. Now the Rockies, of course, made a World, Se World Series appearance in 2007. Um, so they could be a year ahead of that schedule, but they're not. The Cardinals actually came back from a 2-0 deficit, I do believe. Um, can I go back and see that series? I can. And, yeah, so, yeah, we won the, the first two games of the series, but could not clutch up after that. So we're going to go ahead and just move forward to the next season after an unsuccessful postseason. And then here, kind of looking at some awards here, A-Rod wins the American League MVP for the season. Uh, Johan Santana wins the 2006 AL Cy Young. Jared Weaver wins Rookie of American League Rookie of the Year. Ryan Howard wins NL Most Valuable Play Award. And if you thought he had a good uh, 2006 in real life, um, he had 73 home runs in the, this version of 2006 and broke the MLB home run record. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And Chris Iannetta won the NL Rookie of the Year Award. 
And then there's just a bunch of platinum sticks and stuff. And don't worry, Troy Tulowitzki did not win anything. So we're just going to keep on trucking along. Now gearing up for Tulowitzki's second season. His ratings actually improved a little bit through spring training in the offseason. His overall improved and his potential is back up to 70. So that's looking pretty good. Now for the Rockies, it looks like uh, they retain pretty much everyone who... Um, made their team good in the past year Todd Helton, Brad Hobb, Matt Holliday are all back and the team's pretty much the same Tulitsky looks like he's going to slide up a spot in the order pitching wise everything's pretty much the same uh, they actually added Josh Beckett which would seem like a really good thing but uh, he actually failed out of Boston and after one really bad year and so now he's with us so let's go through the all-star break now Tulo uh, definitely has improved, which is a good sign. Uh, his numbers are actually up a lot compared to where they were last year. Almost um, a league average WRC+, plus, which of course measures um, kind of his success in helping his team create runs, which is of course what you want on offense. Um, still just amazing in the field. Um, not quite on pace for his um, real 2007, but still very good. His ratings continue to climb, especially his hitting ratings. His contacts already up. To 55, and of course, his defensive ratings are pretty stacked. And then, speaking of All Star game, uh, still no All Star appearance for Troy Tulitsky. Jose Reyes is getting the shortstop nod, but um, Brad Hop, who is has not fallen off yet um, in this game, or at least I don't think he fell off in real life, at least uh, to this point. Anyway, but he's having an absolute monster season. Ryan Howard has 37 homers at um, the break and Daisuke Matsuzaka is apparently a royal so Royals legend Daisuke baby. Now here at the end of the regular season in year two Troy Tulitsky completes a much better season than what his rookie year was. Um, 292, 348, 428 slash line right there 777 OPS WRC plus finally over 100 war 4.4 and actually, season that's actually decently comparable to his real 20, uh, 2007. Of course, he was much better um, with the bad in that year. WRC plus of 120, 5.6 war. And the Rockies actually um, made the playoffs. Um, eked out uh, one or two game lead in the NLS. That was actually pretty bad. And josh donaldson decided to you know just hop in and become a stud way before he did in real life absolutely insane 109 ops plus and he's also decided just to be the best defensive catcher in baseball and as the second overall pick in 2006 he just you know decided to come on and just be a major league player in his first <laughs> full professional season and also oh, mike cameron's here old mike cameron Oh, but he's still actually pretty good. 365 OBP, nice. Brad Hopp still just is amazing. So is Todd Helton. You know, Josh Donaldson coming in and being amazing. Yeah, we honestly probably have the best catching tandem in baseball with him and Ayanetta. So that's pretty sweet. Now let's uh, go some of the playoffs. All right, so we're facing, wow, we're actually facing Pittsburgh, which I don't even know how they got here. They should uh, still be really bad at this point. Freddie Sanchez. Oh, yeah, they have Jason Bay, who's pretty decent. And uh, whoever Jay Gibbons is had a monster year for them. And Sean Green. Wow. He actually had a really good year, too. Brent Lillbridge. And it looks like all of their pitching actually <laughs> panned out. Yeah, Paul Malum right there. Yeah, so oh, and Zach Duke has also been crazy, too. So, yeah, in this, in this universe, all of the Pirates' millions of pitching prospects... Um, actually pan out in the 2000s, which is probably good for them. And simming the first playoff round, see if we actually beat the Pirates. The real-life World Series champions in this year, the Boston Red Sox, did not make the playoffs. And the Rockies, who are, of course, the World Series losers in those years, are actually making while the Marlins upset the Philadelphia Phillies that are led by Ryan Howard, who's God and hit 64 homers again this year. Which is crazy. And Chase Utley hit 43 of his own. But apparently the 103 win Phillies can't get past the Florida Marlins. Who are, uh, you know, they have Miguel Cabrera and Hanley. And it uh, looks like they kept them. Also catcher Josh Willingham. Which, you know, he's also decided to become an elite defensive catcher in this series. And Dontre Willis, Josh Johnson, another GOAT who um, career destroyed by injuries. Maybe we'll see him in a possible future career simula re-simulation, who knows. And Ricky Nolasco, who is still hanging around in real life. 
Now let's see if we can actually beat the Marlins like the Phillies were not able to do. And it looks like we actually won't because we go down 3-0 immediately. And then the Marlins go ahead and just take it. So it looks like in 2007, we're actually just witnesses the history as the Mariners beat the Marlins. And the Marlins um, don't complete their, you know, thing of being the po only being the postseason twice, both as wildcard teams and winning the World Series in both years. But the Mariners make their first World Series and actually win it. And yeah, I mean, look at like Ichiro. He's still he's 34, but he's still just doing it for them. Fantastic year from him. They've got Prime Adrian Belte, who's Belter's doing it. They have a young Jose Lopez. King Felix also just dominating, you know, 21 years old in his second year in the league. Still dominating. Um, I was going to see if he won a Cy Young, but he didn't. Raul Banya is still good for them. Sinchu Chu, I mean, this team, pretty stacked, and they actually take advantage of it. While they actually have Adam Wainwright, too, who they traded for last year. And they have really young Jordan Zimmerman, who isn't massively overpaid by the Tigers yet so that's pretty sweet and now we're gonna go take a look at the awards alright so now looking at the awards Ryan Howard he continues to just be the most amazing player in the world winning the MVP and hitting 64 homers I think I already said that Pujols um, somehow found his way to San Francisco and he had 50 homers of his own he made it and our own Brad Hopp just doing lots of things before he falls way off. Micah Kadire, he's a Yankee apparently, that was too tired of losing to them on the Twins, decided to switch over. In the National League, <laughs> Brett Myers um, wins the uh, Cy Young Award. Uh, you know, country music star Brett Myers to you. And then in the American League, Johan Santana wins another Cy Young, this time with the Oakland A's. And yeah, that's three Cy Youngs for him because he won in 2004. I knew he already had one. He already had one, but I forgot. And then here, looking at some rookies, left fielder Joey Votto. Um, all right, yeah, it looks like he's still going to definitely go to first base, but left fielder Joey Votto, he comes in, and he's, you know, doing stuff there, winning the rookie of the year. And then AO rookie of the year, that goes to Ben Zobris. So, you know, that's pretty sweet. Let's see, uh... And he's still just only a third baseman and shortstop, so can't play every position under the sun quite yet. Now we've reached the All-Star Game of Year 3. See if Troy Tulitsky has made his first All-Star appearance, and he has. He's not starting, but he's had an absolutely fantastic year um, up to this point. 341, 412, 477 slash line, OPS almost 900, and he's pretty much already been as valuable as he was last year. So pretty cool to see that he gets his first all-star appearance starting to get some recognition. At the end of the regular season now, Troy Tulowitzki had just basically completed just an absolute massive season. As you can see, 330, 386, 510 slash line, OPS, um, just about 900, WRC plus, almost 140, 7.8 wins above replacement. Just absolute crazy stat right there. And you can see real-life stats. Um... Actually, much better than his real life 2008, where he only played 100 games and actually wasn't really that productive um, when he was playing. Uh, really, only one of his seasons, um, you know, with the Rockies, that he um, didn't have a fantastic year. Maybe besides, um, oh, where is it? Um, no, okay, yeah, that's actually it. This is pretty much the only season that he just didn't play with the Rockies. And in this. He just, you know, decided to have a fantastic year. And now the Rockies in general, I mean, just going off. I mean, uh, Tulisky, pretty much uh, the best war in his team. But, I mean, Hop, Holiday, Donaldson, Helton, might even Mike Cameron, uh, Luis Gonzalez off the bench. I mean, literally everyone here is hitting. And uh, when everyone's hitting, uh, that's pretty much just going to give you the best record in the whole MLB. So, Rockies really looking to get that first World Series this year. Best record in baseball facing off against the Dodgers. Let's see if we can do anything against our division rival. Simming forward to see how um, we're going to be doing against them. Uh, and then we have the Battle of Pennsylvania over there with uh, Phillies and Pirates. Pirates, though, of course, they just have that absolute stacked pitching staff. And Rockies able to i get out of it. Mariners are back, and so are the Rays, beating out the Twins, becoming the new Yankees of the uh, of the American League, apparently. 
And then, of course, the Pirates with the absolute stacked pitching staff. They're going to have to come with a Coors Field. Let's see if the Coors Field offense can do anything. And it does. We beat the Pirates. Um, yeah, just absolutely beating them right there. Let's see actually what happened there. If uh, Coors Field did run its course. And, oh yeah, look, tons of uh, pretty much high run um, games there. Oh yeah, look at that. Just beautiful stuff. Love love good old Coors Field. Now World Series actually is a story of two teams that have never won. Except in this world, of course, the Mariners actually won last year. So let's see, go ahead. If uh, we can get it done, if the Mariners will repeat and just, you know, become a whole dynasty in this game, which would be crazy crazy. And it looks like they are because they uh, won 4-1 against us, which is pretty, pretty nuts. The Mariners team that beat us looks like pretty much everyone is back. Um, yeah, they have Rafael for call who they have. They actually added Carlos Beltran. Ichiro is nowhere to be found, by, so I don't know where he went. But Felix Hernandez, absolutely crazy season. Him and Adam Wainwright kind of locking down this. Um, is Ichiro actually still on the team? Okay, yeah, so it looks like Ichiro is actually still on the team. He's just His ratings have just kind of diminished to where it puts him on the bench, but he's still on the team. And the team actually has a lot of kind of names here. Chris Norfia, notable guy. Nomar Garcia, Aparo, Old Nomar. They've got, um, oh, okay, that's Adam Jones. I thought for a second that was about to be outfielder. Andrew Jones, because Adam Jones and this is still trying to play shortstop, it looks like. And then award-wise, looking at uh, the awards from this season, Miguel Cabrera, Miggy, he takes home the... Um, National League award. Kind of surprised. I thought Two Whiskey had a shot at it, but I mean, he had 375 this year and is just really doing it. Um, playing bad third base and just hitting absolutely everything for the Marlins. And then Brad Hop, Matt Holliday, also some guys in there from the Rockies. I mean, <laughs> uh, we had Miguel Cabrera, and then second, third, fourth, and fifth were all Rockies players. And Todd Helton got some votes too. <laughs> So that's pretty wild, pretty wild where you have uh, also David Ortiz of the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm getting some votes and nice to see him playing some first base in the National League in this day. It was just crazy that he left. Joe Maurer, um, catcher, catcher Joe Maurer, so doing it over there for the Twins. Dan Heron doing it for the A's and Robinson Cano still doing it for the Yankees as uh, those guys are doing well. Jake Peavy, still at the Padres and still just having a fantastic year. Roy Hall, Oswald, Ian Snell, one of those Pirates guys who are just insane in the rotation. And then Dan Heron winning the AL Cy Young. Felix Hernandez, Joan Santana also in the race. And Jonathan, Jonathan Lucroy here for the Reds, actually winning Rookie of the Year in his four, first full season were Cargo, of course, Rockies legend, is second place with the Diamondbacks. At the end of the 2009 season, Troy Tulowitzki actually ended up um, improving his season from actually the season prior. Um, the wind above replacement going up a little bit. The OBP not as quite as high, not um, hitting for quite the amount of power, but still WRC plus still in that same neighborhood. And of course, he's still like the best defensive shortstop in baseball. And then comparing that to his real life 2009, he actually played um, pretty much the full season. This is one of those, year, those years. And his war is actually just .1 off. So, yeah, I mean, he had that, that crazy season uh, in real life. And that, this was his best season in real life. And he's kind of uh, matching it, you know, with uh, his best season yet. And the Rockies just continue to just be a stacked team because I mean you know when your offense isn't stacked enough you decide to go ahead and bring in Carlos Beltran to play center field and now going back into the playoffs it looks pretty similar to how it has pretty much every year Phillies Pirates Battle of PA back in there Dodgers back in there Yankees Twins back in there Mariners Rangers and hey the Twins finally beat the Yankees so that's pretty cool and we're moving on again to face the Pirates see if we can beat them in the um, NLCS two years in a row and we do we sweep and then we're facing the Mariners again see if we can actually go ahead and beat them this year after they beat us the first time the Mariners are really trying to become three time in the row World Series champions and they actually do it oh my gosh the Mariners just absolutely just having a dynasty right here in this game just absolutely just nutty in the yearly awards now 
Um, Tulo gets absolutely snubbed for the National League MVP. He finishes third behind Pujols, you know, Giants legend now. Uh, Utley, who's still at the Phillies, good on him. And then, yeah, Tulo finishing third. Cabrera, he's now the American League MVP. Oh, he went to New York. Why did you do it, Miggy? Why did you have to do it like that? And he's now playing left field, which, you know, not as, you know, quite good as his first base stint, but, you know, Still better than him, them forcing him to play third. Andrew Jones is on the Mariners now, which is okay. Kershaw, he's the National League Cy Young. Um, wow, Cl- okay, Clint Hurdle wins uh, manager for the uh, Colorado Rockies. Uh, maybe he doesn't go to Pittsburgh now since the Rockies are actually good with him. And number 69, nice. Johan Santana wins it. Wins the um, Cy Young Award, I should say. Max Scherzer's in there. Hey, he's on the... Rays, maybe that's why they've been so good. And Francisco Liriano, he wins. Uh, not, he doesn't win anything. No, it's, never mind, Liriano. You were just, you were just there. And uh, ooh, is this John Carlos Stanton? It is John Carlos Stanton, rookie of the year. And uh, but it's with the Orioles. In 2010, the Rockies actually missed the playoffs, and the Mariners win their fourth World Series in four years because you know they're just a dynasty um, in this save. Troy Tulowitzki, he's hitting leadoff now for the Rockies, and his potential has actually jumped all the way back up to 75, what it was um, originally. And he actually, hey, he, they actually decided to make him an all-star again for once this season. His war is exactly the same that it was last year, still pretty much turning in the same exact season that he turned in last year. In real life, in 2010, he played 120 games and uh, did not have quite as good of a year. He's a... Uh, it looks like really in this save, he's a better um, defensive shortstop than he was in real life. But uh, in real life, he was definitely the better hitter. And the Rockies missed the playoffs despite literally their entire offense being back because their pitching just decided to be absolutely awful. And all those veteran guys that were, you know, holding like holding together by like nothing decided to just uh, break apart. Looking at the uh, end of season awards, Stephen Drew um, won the NL MVP because, you know, um, why wouldn't he win the NL MVP? Because instead of just having a few good years with the Diamondbacks, he was just like, eh, you know, I see Troy Tulowitzki over there. I'm going to decide to just become the second best shortstop in baseball. And Troy Tulowitzki, again, not even receiving uh, votes in the top three. Clayton Kershaw over there doing his thing, and then they just keep wanting to give Albert Pujols votes. Torto Whiskey, like, fifth in the voting, whatever. Cabrera, another World Series, uh, not another World Series, another um, MVP with the Yankees. He's just doing stuff. Kershaw, another Cy Young, you know the deal. Jordan Zimmerman, Cy Young, which, you know, that's pretty crazy. Irvin Santana is there with the Angels. And then you have Brennan Bosch over here, you know, just being the best rookie in the American League. And then Carlos Gomez doing stuff for the Mets and like his tenth try is the his tenth try having a rookie season and hey there's Elvis Andres he's a rookie and he's with the Braves so that's just pretty sweet and Tulo still no other awards no anything no Silver Slugger no Gold Glove just flying under the radar in 2011 someone finally comes in to play savior and uh, stop that crazy Mariners dynasty from winning their f- fifth title in five years. And of course, of all teams, it's the Pirates, perennial just all-star team, and with still just the best pitching staff in baseball, because of course, you know, why wouldn't the Pirates stop the Mariners from their league domination? And in 2011, Tulo also finally snubs, getting snubbed for MVPs, and he wins it, and it was well-deserved. Because he turned in his best season yet, 9.2 war, and is much better than, um, I mean, not much better, it's better than the 7.7 ridiculous season he had in 2011. And, you know, he's just being out here, just being ridiculous. So, I mean, he's already up to 38 career war, and he's only 26. So, definitely big things coming from too low. And... And also I should mention that the Rockies whole team is kind of falling apart, but they've just 